Lightroom is slow. square crop hmm. it's kind of cool Washed out look.
lapis. Dust. Little piece of dust down here. How's it going? It's going well. How, how are you? Good. Just doing a little Saturday afternoon processing. All right. It's pretty cool. The Salton Sea. Where's that? It's down um, Southern California by uh, Palm Springs. Up by Palm Springs. Okay. Okay. It's kind of this weird. It's weird sort of sea. I guess it was made sort of like when there was an accident with the Colorado River. Okay. And the Colorado River somehow 
got got away from itself and then flooded into this desert and uh, filled it up with water. Yeah, I think I've heard about that. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a really dead place, though. It smells really bad, and all the fish are dead, and oh, okay. everything's abandoned. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it used to be, at one point, it was uh, like a really nice resort, more sort of place. And then uh, the lake got really polluted and other problems, and so... Hmm. So what are you doing? You're uh, just going through the uh, the images, or...? Yeah, I, f I flagged the ones that I want to keep that I shot that day, and so now I'm just kind of going through and processing them. So, you know, I might process the shot a couple of different ways. I got a lot of different presets, and so I might do some different stuff with it. Um, I just sort of did my basic cleanup and process on that last version. Mm -hmm. But I'll go in and look at, uh, you know, I'll do something a little bit more, a uh, little bit different. Okay. This age, age adjusted. Rick, how's it going? Pretty good. Good. What are you guys working on today? Oh, well, not much. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to watch people process, so. <laughs> yeah, I do, uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. I do like doing it. I do like processing. It's relaxing. So I love. I love these old signs. You know, this old lot sign. I don't. I wonder what it originally was before they painted that on it. It was probably some sort of an old neon sign. Huh. Yeah gas station or liquor store or drive-in movie maybe could be I bet it was a motel it looks like it looks like underneath it you can see motel uh, oh. like M-O-T I bet there was a motel here yeah if you can't really can't really read it that well from the hangout screen but yeah yeah. So this is the kind of home you find a lot out there, just kind of sparse, old car in front of it. I think I might do this one as a 16 by 9. That'll save me some trouble with the uh, dust in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dust. Way too much dust in these pictures, although I don't like that telephone pole. Let me crop that out. And I don't like that bush. Down to that. I do like that car, though. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But I went down to Salton Sea, and uh, there's this place called Salvation Mountain out there, which is really cool. It's like uh, this big art installation project. And the guy that started it, apparently Leonard Knight, is in uh, some sort of a nursing home now, I guess. But he was still there when I went there and visited, took some pictures of him. Huh. I like these faded colors for the desert, you know. Give a sense of the... of the desolation of the place. Yeah, I was just looking at Google. I've never been to Salton Sea, but I guess I've been fairly close. We drove to, from L.A. to Phoenix once, so I guess we went just north of there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty it's a pretty desolate area. Uh, mm hmm But it's got a lot of really cool, like, uh, trailer parks and, like, uh, maybe... 60% of the trailer park is occupied, and the other 40% is abandoned. Huh. What kind of car it is this? It looks like a Ford, I guess. Ford, it says. It? Ford something. 
So I love the blue on the car here with the blue on the trim and the blue in the sky. Question is, how do I get the best version of that? Crank up a little vibrancy. Crank up some blue. We bring down the yellow a little bit. What do you guys use to uh, process Lightroom? Yeah, Lightroom Four, Lightroom Four. Yeah, I use Aperture yeah. and Photoshop. Ah, yeah, I love my Photoshop. Love my Aperture. Yeah. But I've been sort of thinking about jumping to Lightroom. I um, uh, I like Aperture a lot, but I guess what's been making me think about it is I'm just kind of wondering, you know, what app where Apple's going <laughs> with some of their software. So. Yeah, I think it's um, you know, I think it's like a Canon Nikon thing a little bit. You know, it's not like one's better than the other per se. Yeah, really. I mean, uh, Lightroom. I, I really hadn't. I haven't really played with Lightroom at all, and I've gotten into Aperture, and it's like they're similar, and there's some ways where you know Lightroom's ahead, and some where ways it's behind. Uh, like I guess Lightroom 4, they just added like curves for you know separate curves for RGB and things like that. Aperture already had that. Um, you know, I'm, but I'm more concerned. You know, like with what Apple's done with things like Final Cut and whatnot. You know, the the these kind of tools are sort of like a adjunct to their main business. So. So you don't think they're as uh, serious about them as say like Adobe is as a standalone company? I, I think the people that are working on it, I just don't know. It's more of, you know, where they're going long term from a kind of consumer versus semi-pro or prosumer point of view. Um, yeah. You know, I'm also, I'm a software developer too. I'm sort of worried about the Mac as an application development platform as well. But Oh, really? <laughs> Why? Yeah, well, it's just it's kind of the iOSification of OS X. Huh. But, yeah. That's interesting. I uh, I don't follow that maybe as closely as I should, but uh, but I do love uh, I do love Mac operating system in general. Yeah, I do too. Um, yeah, from from a user's perspective, at least, it's uh, it's very good. It's funny. I, I I was a Mac guy a long time ago. Sort of didn't have a Mac from sort of OS eight time frame, and then you know got back into them probably about two years ago. And it's amazing how much it's how much the UIs change and things like that, it, and to the better, really. Yeah. Uh, Although I'm I'm not online yet. Uh, and I got my son a new Mac Mini that came with Lion, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. You know, to the scroll, it's everything's backwards on it. Yeah. Yeah, um, it takes a little. I mean, you can turn that around, and but uh, you get used to it. Although I just, I've it, got a Linux box that I rarely log into. It's more of a server thing, and I was on it yesterday, and I, and and. It, the scrolling backwards was getting me a little bit, or you know, now now the, the the traditional way of scrolling is backwards from what I do now. So, so with the Lion, can you can you switch it so it's back to like the old way? Yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah. yeah, there's a preference pane thing. Yeah. Ah, that's good to know. The thing, I, I mean, the things I was talking about was like that, you know, the changes they're making to like the model of, you know. They like this automatic saving thing, which is great, but it's it's you sort of losing control over it a little bit. Yeah. You know, because they've taken away. You know, you don't do save and save as anymore. You do save a version, and it like decides to save for you. Huh. Well, I know, like as I'm working. Yeah. I, I know as I'm working like in Lightroom right now, all my changes are being saved as I do them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Yes, they are. But and, well, I kind of like them. Yeah, well, and see, and like Photoshop CS6 
has that, but you sort of have control. You kind of go in and tell it, you know, save it every 10 seconds or 30 seconds or what or every, I don't think it's seconds, it's more like minutes, right? Mm. Um, what's, the, what's the disadvantage of saving it? Well, okay. it's not, when you're doing it explicitly, that's fine, right? Um, but it's things like, well, and I first this it was first you know an issue with like software development because I use tools that sort of watch for changes in the file system and do things when that happens. Like you know I might save a program file and that causes tests to run automatically things like that. But it uh -huh. also came up I was I was a little bit amused because I don't know if you played with Snap the Mac version of Snapseed at all. No, what is Snapseed? No. Snapseed is a. It originally started out. It was a. It's a. It was an iOS app, and it's from Nick, uh, and it's really kind of cool. It's you know, it's like an Instagram type, you know, kind of quick processing, play around with it kind of photo editing app. And they came out with a version for the Mac, and they sell it on the App Store. And ori the original version had that new Lion, you know, automatic save. Didn't have the save. Um, menu item and whatnot. And then recently, they came out with a new version and they put that old style save back in. And it appears that the main reason that they did that was, like, if you use that as an external photo editor for Aperture. Yeah. See, Aperture works that way, too. If you send something out, Aperture makes a version of it, and then it watches that file that it made for changes. And when they change it, imports it back in. Well, with the, the new save model, that doesn't work. So that so Nick had to go in and and change it to use the old save model so that it would work better with Aperture. Ah, so so Nick makes Snapseed. Yeah, Nick makes Snapseed. Yeah. Ah, and it's a real cool kind of you know casual fun photo editing app. It's you know. Huh, I should try that Snapseed. Yeah. I use Nick, uh, the Silver uh, FX, the, an old version of it. Yeah, I've, I I've got like more of the some... Topaz stuff myself, uh, which is fairly recent. I bought their package at Photoshop Expo. Ah. Yeah, I don't get... Um, my problem is I get lazy, you know, and so I just want to hang out in the light room all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And exactly. I don't want to do anything else with an image. You know, it's like, okay, well, I can do what I want to do in Lightroom, and that's good enough. And Although I do I do use this little crazy little uh, program called the FX Photo Studio Pro, mm. and I like that for, like, effects. You can do a lot of the, like, the zoom effects and the mirror effects, and mm. it's similar. It's kind of like a little Instagram-ish sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. No, I love to play with processing. I've, I've been... I've been a kind of serious amateur photographer for probably 45 years or so now. And I mean, so I used wow. to do a lot of dark room, dark room work as opposed to light room work. And I always used to love to play with all kinds of things, solarizations, posterizations. Um, you know, so, so I do the same thing digitally now. <laughs> yeah, did you, did you just do black and white or did you do color in the dark room too? I did some color. I did some color. Uh, yeah. I did. Uh, I used to spend a lot of time in the dark. Uh, don't you don't have to worry about that. This is bomb. Yes, I mean, I, uh, I'm I'm I, I'm always thinking about how things are the same in some ways between film and digital, and in some ways they're different. You know, it's yeah. Probably the biggest difference is digital. It's so many, It's so much cheaper to take pictures with digital. Oh yeah, yeah. Because there's really no material cost. There's no pro. There's yeah. really no processing cost other than your time. So. Yeah, I think the only the only thing you need is the uh, is Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever you use, and a camera, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it it does it does completely open up the world for what you can do. I mean, you can just take so many pictures, and it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Anymore, you know, you can take you can take thousands of photographs for yeah. minimal cost. I mean, I guess there's hard drives and stuff like that. 
Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the other thing, I'm, I'm trying to teach myself to be less of a pack rat and sort of be aggre- more aggressive in deleting stuff that I know, you know, I, I, I sort of say, wow. no, you know, that's interesting, but no, I don't think I'll ever really use that one. Because i got three others that are like it, you know? Yeah, I tell you, I, uh, I, I'd save everything. You know, I just figure hard drives yeah. are so cheap these days. You know, and maybe, like, even now, I'll go back to old pictures that I couldn't use before, mm-hmm. and with uh, improvements in photo software, you know, all of a sudden, a lot of stuff becomes usable again. Yeah. Mm. Stuff yeah, that I thought had way, way too much noise, you know, with the noise reduction mm-hmm. technology. So much yeah. more now. Yeah. Yeah, but I, it's more things like, you know, I took, you know, I took five or ten exposures of basically the same image, and it's, you know, it's sort of, <laughs> it's not that processing them better is going to make it better. It's that, yeah, one of them really was better, you know, kind of stood out above the rest, and why keep the other <laughs> ones, so. But it's, you know, it's a personal thing. Yeah, that's true. I'm sort of, but you know, I, at heart I am a pack rat, so I'm sort of kind of intentionally trying to fight that instinct, I guess. Well, William Eggleston only takes one picture of one thing ever. Mm. <laughs> so he doesn't have that problem. <laughs> yeah, I was watching, uh, I guess, it, it, I don't know if you ever have time to watch The Grid, on, uh, which is one of Calby's video podcast. The other day yeah, he's seen that show before. They had RC and uh, and uh, Frank Doroff on and they were talking about, you know, spray and pray, you know, and yeah. basically you know, doing continuous shots and stuff like that. And all of a sudden yeah. I had this vision in my mind of Ansel Adams trying to cover a Formula One race with a view camera. <laughs> <laughs> Or even him, or Ansel Adams using a camera with a motor drive, which would probably be almost as, as weird. Yeah, although Ansel Adams was, he would use whatever the latest technology was. Yeah, he wa- he did, but he was also, I don't think he ever got away from this idea of he was pre-visualizing, you know. So he, he'd still plan everything out, and he's, he's very methodical about it, I think. Hmm. He had sort of like the best uh, prototype puzzle blot on loan at all times. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like their yeah, beta yeah. 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 He basically they you know whatever you want they gave to him. But I went up a few years back and met his son Michael uh, and spent mm-hmm. two days with uh, his son Michael up in Yosemite. Yeah. Was Yeah, and that, you know, him using the latest technology, that's, you know, there's always been a, there's been a debate about, you know, if he was alive today, would he be doing HDRs? I think he would. I think his son said the same thing. But then I also saw there was another guy, apparently, who worked with him and actually processed, or, you know, worked with him in the darkroom, and he didn't think he would, so we'll never know. (laughs) I know. Yeah, it's interesting. Some of these old photographers, you know, they still shoot film, you know. Uh, Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Eggleston still shoots film. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, I'm trying to think. Elliot Irwin, I think, is one of the ones who was going on about that. These, these were guys that I look, kind of looked up to back in the 70s, right? Jerry yeah. Ulsman, who's just amazing, right? I mean, he did all those composites with film. He, he did stuff back in those days that I don't know if I could figure out how to do in Photoshop today. <laughs> I love roads. Roads out in the middle of nowhere. <clears throat> it 
sometimes I'll flag a couple of versions of a shot, and then when I go to process it, I'll pick, pick the one I really want. Mm -hmm. So which ones do you do you flag? Do you flag the ones you want to publish, or the ones you want to keep, or the ones you want to process, or? Yeah, I flag I flag the ones I want to process, and then I go through and I process them. Yeah, you know, I, I take I take a closer look at them to make sure that I really like them. Yeah, and you know, really want to use them, and then I'll I'll go from there and uh, go through and process them and. And then if when I'm done processing them, um, if I still like them, I'll keep them and export them. But a lot of times I give up. Yeah. So I, I'm assuming Lightroom also lets you rate them, like give it a one or a five star. Yeah. Or yeah, it does. Yeah, it does have that functionality. Mm. Yeah. I actually don't use that functionality at all. No, me neither. I don't. Yeah, I tend to use it at least temporarily. Like when I'm trying to pick the best stuff out of a shoot, or I'm doing a 366 project, so I have to, you know, I shoot some stuff and then I have to pick what I'm gonna do, and I just kind of go quickly through and I'll, you know, star ones that I like, and then kind of sh only show the ones I've starred and kind of sort them up. Yeah, so it's a second, like a second uh, level of uh, flagging for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I tend to use that actually more than flagging. Huh. Yeah, I just go through and flag flag everything that I want to keep. Do you use the uh, the color labels? Hmm. You know, I do. Um, yeah, I do. If if I if I've already exported something, I don't use them very use them very much. If I've already exported something, I'll code it as red. Mm -hmm. And if I have an ex, that's the only color I really use. I, I mean, I'll sometimes I'll, I'll use them for specific things, and I have in the past. Yeah. Uh, I can't even think of anything off the top of my head what I mean by that, but uh, if for whatever reason I want to sort some photos by certain. Yeah, I tend to use tags for that. Yeah. Well, you know. I've I've exported this to Google Plus, right? Or I've you know, this is one of my Project 366 photos. Or it's funny, you know, Lightroom or whatever software you're using provides so many different ways of doing the same thing. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's amazing. I mean, I I use the the field uh, copy name to identify where I've you know where I've posted photos, and then I make mm. virtual copies and do it that way, because then I can easily filter out the photos that I've published to YouTube, uh, sorry, to Facebook or to Google Plus or wherever. And uh, yeah, that's interesting. See, I don't use Lightroom for to organize all of my photos because I've got too many photos. Uh, so what do you use for that? Well. Uh, you know, basically, yeah, the finder basically. I mean, I put all my really? raw files. Every single day has its own catalog. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which may be a bad way of doing it. Uh, yeah. See, that's that's one of the things that I really like Aperture for, and I was sort of wondering, you know, how Lightroom did in that respect, because you know, Lightroom's really good about letting you. You know, keep the catalog separate from where the photos are. For example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can you can either when you like import pictures you, or photos, you can say, do you want them managed or referenced? Uh, and typically, what I'll do is when I like I import it from the SD card, I'll bring them in as managed, which means they're in the they're in the Aperture library. But then you can go back and relocate them. So like I'll keep the most recent photos on my laptop hard drive, and then when things start to fill out, I'll then relocate them to a external drive that I have. But Aperture still knows where they are; it still has thumbnails for them. You know, it's like, and I can do some stuff with it. It's just if I need to do anything heavy with them, then I have to have the external drive hooked up. Yeah, I do. Uh, I've got five Drobos now. Mm-hmm. And on the Drobos, I'll uh, put. I have two types of 
folders, uh, files to be processed, and uh, days that are already processed uh, that are archived. And then as I want to proce process something, I'll just bring it into uh, my main hard drive because I like to work off of that because it's faster than working off an external. Right. And uh, and then I'll um, when I'm done, I'll export that as a catalog mm -hmm. and save it in the file and then put it on an archive that I'm done. Right. So if I ever need to go back, I can go back to that catalog for that day and see everything I've done. Right. Um, but I, you know, I, I tried in the past. I don't know. I haven't tried with Lightroom Four, but I tried, you know, putting in like, you know, seven hundred thousand photos to see what it was like, and mm -hmm. it just got so sluggish. It was like not usable. Ah, okay. So that's interesting. I mean, that's that's it's sort of. I guess that's where Aperture really majors. I guess is in that catalog management and being able to deal with lots of files. Because I, yeah, I, I mean, that was the big difference, I think, I think that a lot of people had, saw between uh, between iPhoto and Aperture. Oh, iPhoto is terrible. Yeah, and I'm amazed. Well, I, mean, that, I, I guess Trey uses iPhoto to, to keep track of his published <laughs> pictures. Which, oh, does he? Yeah, which I don't know. <laughs> At least he was a year ago because I went through his video tutorial and that's what he was doing. Yeah, I don't know if he's still doing that. Uh, yeah, I um, I used I've tried to use it before for whatever reason. Uh, I think basically because I used it uh, with Apple TV, mm -hmm. and it, it was just awful. It was uh, mm. I thought it was awful. well, and everybody who had a Mac had it too, right? Because yeah. pretty much you get our life when you bought the Mac, so. I hate using Photoshop. I want to take okay. out the power lines, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I was wondering about that when <laughs> My Photoshop is just it's so slow too. Everything is so slow. So now are you using CS5 or CS6? I'm using CS5 right now. Yeah, I think CS6 is faster. I haven't used yeah. it much. I was holding off. I didn't want to get the beta and then have to back out because I didn't know if I could afford it. And yeah. I was, really, I was really lucky. And again, Kelby was running a series of webinars um, for the launch this week, and I managed uh -huh. to win a copy. <laughs> Oh, is that right? Ah, oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I guess I'll get, I'll actually get it, and it actually comes out I think mid mid May. But mm. so as soon as that happened, I said, okay, well, I'll download the beta because now I know I can stick with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't like. Um, you know, I sh I should maybe play around with it. I should go get the beta and use it. I just don't use Photoshop enough, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the one th one of the things that's really nice about it is they really they they really cleaned up the UI. Yeah, it's a lot more consistent. Um, Of course, right now it's sort of getting over that, you know, be, because it's different from CS5, there's a bit of a learning curve, but... Yeah, very, yeah. <laughs> but Man, there's, I'm on, a, I'm on a constant learning curve with uh, Photoshop, man. I have no idea what I'm doing with it, really. Well, and that's why I'm popping in here, because I find the only way to really learn any of these things is to watch other people using them. Yeah, yeah and try it yourself. Dave Veffer was showing me some stuff with it last week. He's pretty good with it. I mean, I'm, there's a lot of people that are that are really good with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
like watching some. I just, of, like, you know, uh, I get lazy because it's just. Well, Alan Shapiro is another good one to watch. Yeah, Alan's very talented. He does some really cool texture blend stuff. Yeah, those guys do, I think, a little bit more sophisticated than I do. I, do, I just tend to do more basic processing. Right. Get the exposure where I want it. So, do you do much or or any HDR? Uh, you know, I've done HDR before, but um, no, not really. Yeah, I don't uh, do a lot of it, but I I enjoy it. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just not my thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I think I'm drawn to. Uh, I mean, when I've used it before. You know, I, I was able to use it in such a way that it didn't really look like HDR. Mm -hmm. um, and I can appreciate the look for folks that, that do it well. I mean, I love Trey's photos, and, and uh, Tom Anderson mm -hmm. does some wonderful stuff with HDR as well. But I don't know why. It's just never been sort of my thing. I like... Well, I um, think the, the thing is you have, to, you, you have to put work into it, right? Everybody says that... that H, they don't like HDR because it's over-processed. And I think the fact yeah. of the matter is that most of the HDR that you see that people don't like is under-processed. They didn't really do yeah, that. Now, because um, you have to, you know, you have to do what Trey does. You know, you, what, you know, he'll do the HDR. He'll use Photomatix, and then he'll come into, he'll b come back into Photoshop, load the original exposures into layers. Right, and then mask in parts of it, you know, so you get a more realistic effect, right? It's, you know, and it's really good for doing the kind, you know, like if you were, if I was doing, you know, like I, back 20 years ago, I had a friend who, who was an architectural photographer, and he did a lot of interior shots, like yeah. advertising shots for, uh, and I guess real estate shots too. You know, back in the day, you'd have to do all this sophisticated, you know, you have to bring in lights, and you have to do light setups so that you could balance the, you know, the out, you know, let's say you had windows in the shot. You want to balance the exterior light with the interior light, right? Mm. That's a perfect reason to use HDR, right? Yeah. You basically, you have an exposure for the outside. You've got an exposure for the inside. You have multiple exposures for the inside a lot of times, right? And you get very realistic results, you know, because what you really deal, you know, the fact is when we're in a room and we're looking around, our irises are adjusting all the time. So we've, you know, we're we're taking different exposure. Our eyes are taking different exposures all the time, and and our brain sort of melts them together. I think what what I would do in in uh, in that scenario would be to take take just you know two exposures, one for the inside, one for the outside, and com combine the two in in Photoshop using just layer masks. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of manual HDR, but yeah, just you know, um, mask out one layer and combine them. Yeah, well, I yeah, guess. I mean, I I I have a hard time just, I, I don't know what it is, processing that much in a single photo. I just, I feel like I'm somehow overdoing it. Mm -hmm. but that's just me, you know. Uh, yeah, it's just it's personal, yeah, exactly. Sometimes I think less is more. Yeah. Creighton, how's it going? Pretty good. How about yourself? Good. Where are you located at? I am in Seattle. Seattle. That's a nice place. It is, especially for the lightning that we get around here, especially yeah. where I am right now. Nice. I like that uh, the uh, public library you have there. Oh, yes. the It's a very interesting public library. I haven't been able to shoot it just yet, but I... I think it has some nice uh, angles to shoot it from. 
Yeah, I've shot I've shot that. I love it. I don't know if I can share this one photo with you guys without kicking you off. I think it should work. You can, yeah. That's oh, one wow. that I've just taken. Nice. Whew. That was one. Right. Of, that was one of the good ones. Lightning action. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I have I have a weird fascination with lightning, I and mean, I love being able to to shoot it. Now, now, how many seconds is that exposure? I think this is twenty seconds. Twenty seconds. Uh, and what do you what what did you shoot it on? Did you sh are you shooting it at uh, ISO one hundred? Uh, yes. So I shot it for fifteen seconds at f five, uh, ISO one hundred. Yeah. That's nice. You guys saw the lightning shot with the Bay Bridge that was everywhere, right? Yeah. yeah. That was pretty cool. Cool. This one actually caused a fire. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Hmm. Are you taking these from your house, or are you going to a certain spot? Um, I'm. Uh, I go to college over in uh, uh, Pullman, Washington, and we have a, a very tall um, sciences building that I was able to get up to the top of, and I, I took from a, a window, an open window up up there. Oh, wow. Nice. And those were actually like, I haven't. I don't do much post processing on photos, and I've been trying to get into it more. And that was my real first kind of test to post process. Ah, now what did you use to post process this? Uh, Lightroom. Lightroom, yeah. That's what I mainly use. Yeah, boy, Lightroom seems to have the market, don't they? Yeah, I think so. I, I, Lightroom is the main one, but I also have. Um, I think it's called Aperture for Mac. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about that. Hey, Dave. So, Thomas. How's it going? Not too bad. How about yourself? Good. Good. I was just talking about you. I was you saying were. you had mad. Yeah, yeah, I said you had mad. <laughs> you have mad Photoshop skills. Oh well, thank you. Because <laughs> I am mad. And crazy. <laughs> So Thomas, we were talking about HDR. I just screen shared one of mine. This is uh, let's see here. And this is one of my. Uh, this, this is one I'm. I got a certain amount of pride because this was one of my 366 project shots, and I got a plus one from Trey's mom on it. So. <laughs> nice. If Susan likes it, you know it's good. Yep. <laughs> I like Trey's mom. Yeah, it's just cool like that. <clears throat> I love old cars. I just put up another one. This one's not HDR. Nice architectural shot. Yeah. Sometimes I get lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I love shooting architecture. Uh oh, somebody's at the door. <laughs> Jeez, I hate having to answer the door. We'll be right back.
So, Peter, where are you located? I'm in Sweden. Sweden? Yep. Nice. Never got quite that far north. No, it's uh, south of Sweden, so it's not as, it's not as uh, you know, we have a pretty nice spring going on at the moment, so that's, uh, it's okay. Yeah, I'm trying to remember the northernmost town in Germany I've been in. Hanover, maybe? Yeah, okay. It's probably the closest I've been to you. Hmm. That was my son's friend. Huh. Creighton's doing some landscape stuff today, huh? Yeah, this was from... Uh, Las Vegas. I went down to CES. Viva Las Vegas. Yes. Actually, this weekend there's a there's a big. I live uh, where there's a lot of plains and fields and stuff, and there's there's one big mountain around here that I'm thinking about going to tomorrow. Uh, so you so you live near Vegas? No, uh, I live in Washington. You live in Seattle. Yes. Yeah, right, right, right. That's what I, 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 I went to Las Vegas for CES. Ah, okay. I missed that. How did you like CES? Um, it, was, it was my first CES, and it was, it was very crowded, but I, I liked it. I liked seeing all the, the new gadgets and gizmos, and especially the, the Canon booth. was pretty cool. <laughs> I went a long time ago. It had to be like maybe went two years in a row, like maybe five years ago. It was cool. I went to uh, AVN one of the times, which goes on at the same time and took photographs of a bunch of porn stars. <laughs> Actually, I think they ran those concurrently for a while by uh, purposefully, I guess. Oh, did they? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I've never been to either one, sport. so. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to Ve to Vegas twice. Once was on business, and once was on that trip I was talking about, where we uh, we drove from L.A. and ended up in Albuquerque. Sounds like a pretty good trip. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It was my, my wife and my mother-in-law, and my mother-in-law promised she was going to drive, and she I don't think she drove a mile. <laughs> Most of the way through the desert, she was in the backseat of the car sleeping. <laughs> oh, and those mother-in-laws. <laughs> We had she, my, my mother-in-law had a, a mild gambling problem, and I had the opposite. I'm not a gambler at all. I had like 50 bucks to spend in the casinos, and I spent like 25, and then put the rest in my pocket and said, "I'm going to spend it on something else." <laughs> I love old signs like that. Old, oh, I do too. Old rundown signs. Love old signs. Ski in. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a ski in. Maybe it was something else at some point. There's a lot of a uh, lot of abandoned stuff out of the Salton Sea. Just old signs like this. Well, maybe it's water cocktail. Not Colorado. Uh, no, this is uh, California, Southern California. It's up by Palm Springs. That, yeah, Southeast California. <laughs> God, I hate dust. <laughs> the bane of Tom Lightroom is so bad at it. Yeah. What a crude tool. <laughs> True that. I've got some uh, 
I got some hot pixels on my sensor, and so I usually have to take those out whenever I take photos, or at least long exposure photos. I think the key is just never to shoot at anything higher than F2. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford any lenses that fast. <laughs> it. Now, Dave showed me the split toning thing last week, which I had never used, and I love now. It's such a quick way to get really cool color palettes going in your shots. Yeah, really just sort of Instagram it up. <laughs> Give it the old school feel. Like hey, that. Instagram's got to be good. It's worth a billion bucks. <laughs> I know, right? Actually, uh, I never used it because I, I, I was on Android. And uh, now I'm using it. I, I like it. Yeah, I, I never used it much. I've got an iPhone. I've had it on there, but I might have done one or two exposures with it. <laughs> I was amazed. I heard that Zuckerberg actually did that deal and then went to the board. Yeah, that's what I heard as well, But because he could. And, but the other thing yeah. is he did it in what I would thought should have been the quiet period before their IPO. That's the other strange thing about it. That's okay, though. I mean, th th this, that's the thing about... Uh, Facebook is when you buy into it is you're you're buying into a hundred percent control by Zuckerberg. Yeah. Just like same with Google though. Google, uh, Larry and Sergey, they have total control. They can do anything they want. Mm -hmm. But I think that's good because you don't get you know too many boards. They want to have sort of this short term mindset. They can't see the big picture, and they're not willing to wait. They want, you know, it's like corporate profits today. All right, well, I gotta go do some other stuff. So it was nice hanging out with you guys. Love the photos. Maybe I'll hang out with you guys Thanks. later. Take it easy, yeah, man. Catch you later. See you. Darken the sky a little bit. Right now, I'm going through my Lightroom, looking through my DC shots, trying to find anything left that's worthy of processing. <laughs> trying to squeeze one more shot out of the weekend. <laughs> oh, there's always something else, isn't there? Yeah, I don't know. I think of I think anything I process now is just not going to be it's not going to end up great because otherwise I would have seen the shot by now. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, I'm I'm a horrible judge of of what Shots of mine are good, and which ones are bad. I'm constantly uh, thinking, oh, that's a terrible shot, and then I'll process it and put it up, and everybody likes it. Or I'll have a shot, and I think, oh, that's a great shot, and I'll put it up, and everybody hates it. Yeah, that's always the case, right? I yeah. do actually have one that's worth that might be worth it. Let's see. I'll screen share. I'll let you guys decide. Where's well, Thomas, I think you have a pretty high, high batting average, at least the with the stuff you put out, let out in the public. Yeah, I do okay. You, have a, knack for, you have a knack for finding the angles, I think. Should I work on this one? 
I like Should that I work one. on this one? What is that, Dave? This is at the World War II Memorial. These are all stars. Wait for, oh, okay. that, wait for that this to resolve here. The, the World War II Memorial in D.C.? Yeah. Yeah, it's right by the fountains. It's behind the fountains. Yeah, yeah, we went out there. My wife and I went up there for Photoshop Expo. We didn't go to the... Yeah. And actually, it's the first time I'd been there. I was really kind of disappointed in it. Huh. Yeah, so you can see these are all stars. Yeah. So I was thinking I could process one of these series here. So either this one or this one. Is it better to have more sky or the complete? I like the one. Yeah, I like that one better myself. But that one or which one? Or this? I'm thinking this. I'm thinking the other. This one, that if one. you. Um, um, I like the first one. Yeah, me too. And I think the one with sort of a mirror image kind of thing. I think it's more. Yeah, it's got some symmetry going on with it. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I think it's the just only more advantage image. of this one is I have more sky and I have the moon and Jupiter and whatever the other planet. And the sky is the the sky. I think is one of the coolest things about that photo. Well, I yeah, you can go with either. I prefer it like that, and there's one major reason why I like it like that, and it's because it, it confuses the viewer as to know which way up they are. You could be under a bridge and shooting straight up at it, or uh, sideways onto something being reflected. It makes people question what it is they're looking at. Right. You know, if you really wanted to, you could cheat and composite in the part <laughs> of the sky from the other one. But Yeah, I could do that. That would be pretty easy, actually. Yeah. But I'm going to tone map this, so I'll have to tone map both and then combine them. Only because, well, I don't have to. That'd be easier. Thomas, what, what are your thoughts on, on cropping? I've seen you uh, crop some of your images um, Oh man, I crop. Yeah, I crop to death, man. I love to crop. Stephen Floyd hasn't cropped any of his photos at all. Uh, he was a famous photographer, but uh, yeah, I crop. You know, I, I, if if, it, if it's not important to the photo, if it doesn't, if it doesn't add anything, I don't think it belongs in in the photo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I'm with you too. I tend to use the square crop a lot because, you know, I find is there, you know, is there a third of this photograph that really just doesn't matter at all? And usually, I find there there is. I mean, this one here I cropped. Uh, where's my crop here? Right here. Oh, come on, beach ball. Uh, you know, I mean, I cropped most of the photo out. You know, I really, what I was interested in is that sign, and mm. I didn't want the, you know, I, at the time when I took the shot, I thought, oh, well, that golf cart's kind of interesting, and the way it goes with the sign, and, yeah. but then now that I'm processing it, I'm thinking, well, you know, really, the sign is what I want to focus on, mm -hmm. the sign is what I want to see in these sort of uh, uh, awkwardly uh, leaning telephone poles, mm -hmm. so, you know, I've just cropped it down to a small little piece of what's left. And how often but do you often, how often do you straighten or rotate them too? Uh quite a bit. You know, some and sometimes I'll I'll do a couple of different crops. Like uh, yeah. I might do I might take this and then make a virtual copy and do something um, you know, I might rotate more with this because mm -hmm. the telephone poles are already skewed so you know you can really skew it if you wanted to to really yeah. you know angle it out now yeah. you know something what more they, like that what they would call a Dutch angle if it was a movie <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. you know something even a little bit more abstract like that for a second version of it which I like that too you know, it's funny, back in the 70s, it, there was this sort of trend. You used to get the film holders for the enlarger and mill them out a little bit so that if you 
exposed a 35 millimeter frame. There was a black border around it when you made the uh -huh. print. Yeah. And the print that was the proof that was to prove that you didn't crop it. <laughs> yeah, see, I don't. Sort of like, I don't. It's not like the, these guys like, that today that say you got you don't shoot raw. You got to get it right in the camera, right? Yeah, I know that's ridiculous. That's like say, that's like shooting Polaroids. Yeah, I don't understand all that. Okay, why limit yourself? Now, if people got it right first time every time, they wouldn't have erasers around, would they? That's why when people draw, they take several attempts to get things right. I don't see why people doing photographs shouldn't be the same, yeah. But no. because we use cameras, they put us uh, slightly differently. They think about things differently, and we're not allowed to crop when we can't add things or we can't take things out. And they say, well, loads of artists do that. Why can't we? So uh, really, for me, it's, uh, it's all about the final... The final image that people look at, how you get there, what you do to it, that's by the by. They don't need to know that. It's what they're looking at at the end. And if it works for them and it works for the viewer, then uh, it was worth it all. Yeah, exactly. Let, live and let live is, you know, it's like Nikon versus Canon, right? You know. <laughs> Oh, there's all sorts of things. There's like vinyl versus CDs going back yeah. years ago. Oh, we prefer this, we prefer that, and a big argument. Who cares? As long as you can still listen to the music you like. Well, it's like you know. So I live in North Carolina, and I just I just did early voting in our our primary election. We've got, I guess it's the North Car Carolina version of Prop Eight on the ballot, which I voted against, right? And I figure. Why shouldn't we let everybody be as miserable as heterosexuals and get married, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a hot, I hear hot that, but, Yeah. And somebody told me that even the guys that were behind Prop 8 came out against the North Carolina one because this one even disallows, it explicitly disallows civil unions, so. Hmm. Oh, I like this. Well, ho hopefully by the time Trey and I get married, it'll be allowed in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Nearly 10 o'clock in the evening. I've got to sleep with that image in my head. That's going to keep me awake I'm, for hours now. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> Trey Williams. You've got to catch up with him first. He keeps moving around so much. I know. New Zealand. That's pretty cool. That's, that's one place I'd love to go. I can't leave the United States. Really? Yeah. It violates my probation. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I'm working on I'm working on the hundred largest American cities, and I don't want to get distracted by going international. Yeah. Well, I used to travel a lot overseas on business, but. I think it would do me in if I couldn't take pictures somewhere else. I do what I can locally, but I've got so used to taking photographs uh, out in Southeast Asia. If somebody said I couldn't go out there and do that more, I think it would finish me off. So, Josh, are you yeah, in the I'm UK? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the south coast. We've been... Uh, We've had to batten down the hatches at the moment. We've got big storms coming in straight off the sea, and it's, it's blowing a gale outside. So the heat is on, and all the windows, all the double glazing is bolted shut. And <laughs> Whereabouts are you? Can, he, can hear the bins outside blowing around. The Ooh. wind's got inside all the bins, and it's hitting the windows and all sorts. Mm. I'm, I'm right in the south coast of a uh, city called Brighton. Okay. Okay. 
which is uh, about 50, 50 miles now, uh, south of London. Okay. I don't think I ever got there. I sort of, I guess I've been sort of in the triangle between London, Winchester, Southampton, and oh, right. uh, well, yeah, I mean, if you went from, uh, if you drew a line straight down from uh, London, straight down to mm -hmm. the, the south coast, you'd probably hit Brighton, but uh, Southampton's mm -hmm. only a, about an hour and a half drive from from us going west, so it gives you a rough mm -hmm. idea of where we are on the coast. Yeah. yeah, I'll travel internationally at some point down the road, but I really want to get through the America. I really want to get through America. So much interesting stuff to photograph here. Yeah, for sure. So, have you been to every state? Oh no, 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 no! I got a ways to go. I've been to. Uh, I've probably photographed, I don't even know now, uh, let's see, how many have I done? Uh, of the 100 largest cities, I've done 31 of the 100 largest, so I've got 69 left to go. And that includes most of the states. Been, I've only been to, well, I mean, I've been to a lot of states. Mm -hmm. But not, but I haven't shot a lot of states. I mean, when I was mm -hmm. younger and on business and stuff before, when I wasn't necessarily shooting when I went there. But I've only uh, photographed 16 states so far. Mm. Have you got a favorite state and favorite city so far, or? No, I don't. Every time you know, I go to these cities and I'm like, oh wow, that was just my favorite. That was so cool. <laughs> and it seems like each city has like some interesting thing about it, you know, uh, like uh, I love shooting, um, you know, Graceland in Memphis, and, uh, uh -huh. you know, you'll still think, oh, that's really cool, but then, you know, you shoot the street life in South Beach in Miami, and you're like, wow, that's that's pretty cool, you shoot the abandoned stuff in Detroit, and you're like, there's nothing like this in the world, you know, I mean, it's, every city seems to have its, I haven't, I haven't found a city yet that I just thought was lackluster. You know, you go to Seattle and you got that uh, that uh, public library, which is the Rem. I, I think it's Rem Coolhouse. Did it's uh, amazing that public library, and do, you know, Space Needle's fun to shoot. Yeah, Space Needle. Didn't with Space Needle just had its 50th anniversary? I think, or the anniversary of the opening of the World's Fair. But I'm going, uh, I'm going to do uh, Denver in June. Uh, June, I'm going to do, I'm going back to Chicago in June to shoot some more. Uh, I was going to try to make it up to Milwaukee, but I don't think I'm going to be able to now. Uh, I'm going to go, where else am I going? Uh... Going some other so you're places. Gonna, you're gonna just do Denver, or you're gonna try to get around some of the other places around there? No, I think just Denver. I want to do. Uh, I'm doing Southern Oregon next month. Just going up there. That's not a hundred largest city, but it's uh, just interesting stuff. Uh, I'm doing. Um. I might go to yeah, the Oregon coast is gorgeous. Yeah, it is. I feel like I'm going to Los Angeles. I'm going to Los Angeles a couple times. I'm going to go shoot down there. I want to get in the LA River. Marcus Square, I think, he might be able to get us in there. There's all kinds of graffiti and cool, interesting stuff in there. Yeah. I'm sure there's a way. 
lots of movie locations. Or it's been used for a lot of movie locations. Yeah. I don't know, if I was going to Denver, I might think about going to Colorado Springs, too. Yeah, I could. You know, the hard thing the for Air me Force, is... There's some cool stuff at the Air Force Academy, if you want to, you know... That cathedral there is pretty cool. Or the chapel, I guess, not cathedral. Also, the Garden of the Gods, which is near there, is kind of cool for kind of rock formations and stuff. Yeah, my problem is it's hard to get time off work all the time, and so it's like... Mm -hmm. I'll do, I'll do these long weekends, like Friday to Monday, and uh, and do that. But you know, if I go too long. So photography is not your full time gig, huh? No, I work in the investment business. Okay. But it, you know, uh, I'm incredibly passionate about photography. Mm -hmm spend most of my free time on it. So you you live in Texas? or? No, I'm in uh, San Francisco. Oh, okay. Actually, actually over in the East Bay, but uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah. Not a bad place to be. <laughs> no, it's great. I love it. I used to go there quite a bit on business. Funny, my wife and I went there on our honeymoon, and we did like like a bed and breakfast hotel in San Francisco, and then we headed up into Napa. We were going to do bed and breakfast, and we ended up at this place. I forget what town it was in, but it was a... It was a bed and breakfast, but it was somebody's sort of, it was a house, right? And yeah. They sort of let, we had the, the whole house to ourselves. The, the, the owners, they had another place over in uh, Fort Bragg, which I always thought was in North Carolina, yeah. but there's a Fort Bragg on the, well, you would know that, right? Yeah. And my wife yeah. felt so uncomfortable. We were supposed to stay there for two nights, and she said, we gotta leave. we got to go somewhere else, so... <laughs> Really? Why? Yeah. She just didn't feel, she didn't, for some reason, she didn't feel comfortable being in this big house all by ourselves and, you know, somebody else's house all by ourselves. And, you know, they had, they huh. sent somebody in to make us breakfast and stuff, but. <laughs> sounds, sounds like she'd seen The Shining too many times, huh? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah, good. yeah, we went there, then we went down to Carmel, and it's a nice trip. Yeah, that's all nice. The other cool trip was uh, my parents one year did a, they did the Seattle, then up, you know, to Bam, Vancouver and Banff, and up the inner passage to, or inner passages to Alaska. And they came back, and they'd never been on the West Coast before. And I said, "So you're gonna, you're, you're gonna go see the coast, you know, California coast and what?" I said, "Ah, I don't know." And they said, "Well, if you fly out and meet us." And so I, that's what I did. I, after they were done with that, I flew to Seattle and met, met them, and we drove down the coast. Uh, I think we got down to Carmel, and that's when I got that's when I got to see the Oregon coast, and that is so gorgeous. Yeah, that is. We stayed one night at a place called Salishan, which is right there about where it's most spectacular. And But it was the foggiest night, so we didn't really get to see much of it there. But ah. Okay. Well, it is 2.10, and I have got to go hang out with the kids now. Hey, you want to see my uh, 
shot I was working on before? Yes. Definitely. Uh, it's not done, but... Let's see where you're at. So you did composite in the, the moon? or what? Yeah, Is that the moon? I, yeah, I combined both. That's cool. I like it. That's a good call. I like that. Yeah. That's really nice. I'm still just tweaking. These are coins down here. I'm not sure if I should just make them go away. Hmm. I think I like it darker. Yeah, I think I do too. It's nice. It's a nice uh, balance against the sky. Yeah. So you so did you say you tone map them and then composite yeah, them? Yeah, I tone mapped both sets of three, and then I brought them into Photoshop and. Okay, so they were both HDR brackets. Yep. Nice. Not much of not much of an HDR. It was like zero and minus one. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, funny. I had the last HDR I did. It was an architectural interior, and there was a lot of contrast. And I ended up taking like a seven exposure bracket, and I ran it through Photomatix, and I don't think I had to do anything to it afterwards. I was amazed. Yeah, I should love when that happens. I mean, usually I do do a lot of post-processing after I've done the tone mapping. But Dave, how did you change your uh, Adobe Lightroom logo to plusdave.com? That looks cool. <laughs> uh, I think it's just uh, up here under Edit and then Identity Plate Setup. Yeah. Oh. Snaky. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Well, All these little underhand tricks, they're fantastic. It's what makes it work. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump off. Catch you later. All right, later. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, nice seeing you guys. Too.